And in the spirit of Mount Pectu, with love of toil that shall never die, with will of iron fostered by the truth, will lead the whole world by and by. That is the third stanza of the Eguka, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea's national anthem. But with the spirit of Mount Pektu and a love of toil that shall never die, has North Korea ever led the whole world when it comes to football? Or, more precisely, do the people of North Korea believe that their country has ever been crowned as world champions of the world's most popular sport? That is the question that was put to me by subscriber Ripple via a direct message on Twitter, who wrote, Hi mate, I saw a video on my YouTube recommended about North Korea faking the 2010 World Cup as propaganda. It shows them beating Brazil even though they lost. Can you make a video on this and is it real at all? The quality is pretty low, so it is hard to tell. Yes Ripple, yes I can, since North Korea and the World Cup are two of my favourite subjects and I've only been able to combine them once in the past on this channel, so I will very warmly accept the opportunity to do so again. I vaguely remember the story that Ripple is referring to, and I vaguely remember it having more than a faint whiff of nonsense about it. But I think I was probably too busy living a life of pure decadence on the Malleus Strip, having just left school at the time, to investigate it any further. Immediately though, I spotted an inconsistency there since I finished school and was living it up in Malia in 2014 during the World Cup in Brazil, whereas Ripple's message alludes to North Korea faking the 2010 World Cup, four years earlier, in South Africa. A quick bit of research heralds our first revelation, which is that it has twice been quite widely reported that North Korea's state media claimed that the country won the World Cup in both 2010 and 2014 in a number of Western media outlets. That seems a bit fishy to me, but hey, Italy and Brazil have both won back-to-back -back World Cups, so why not North Korea? Reading the reports of North Korea's supposed claims of footballing supremacy, which were published in The Mirror, The Express, CBC, The Metro, and Bleacher Report in 2014, to name just a number of Anglophone outlets, along with a raft of foreign language sports magazines and websites, it quickly became clear that they all centred around one key piece of evidence. A single news broadcast from North Korea. I suspect that I could play the clip without being demonetized since I can't imagine anyone coming after me for copyright infringement, but I really don't want to get a channel strike and have to get a proper job, so I'm not even going to risk it. I will explain the significance of the video and its veracity in this video, but if you still want to watch it at the end, for any reason, you can search North Korea Fakes World Cup or something along those lines in the YouTube search bar and an incredibly low resolution video of the original video should show up as the top result. This is one of two videos that are often cited in regard to North Korea doctoring World Cup footage and misleading its people. The other being this one, which you can find by searching North Korea wins the group stage on World Cup. There are more of these videos, or similar videos, but these are the two most frequently cited in news reports, and the fact that one of them is dated, either 2010 or 2011, and the other 2014, probably explains the fact that this story arose at two successive World Cups, as I outlined just a moment ago. Most of the videos follow a similar pattern. There is a female North Korean newsreader, who is probably the only North Korean newsreader or news anchor that most of us are familiar with in the earlier clip. Her name is actually Ri Chun Hee, and she is famous for her passionate broadcasting style and occasionally rather erratic changes in volume and tone, interspersed with clips from, in the 2010 video, North Korea at the 2010 World Cup, and in the 2014 video, just North Korea games that have been played outside of the World Cup. There are captions allegedly translating what the newsreader is saying into English. Typically, it is something along the lines of, our glorious North Korean fighters have massacred all in their path, including Japan and the United States, of course, to become world champions in Rio or Johannesburg, or something along those lines. Now, to a non-Korean speaker, of which I am one, I can see why it could be quite difficult to assess the legitimacy of someone speaking Korean with subtitles below it. In some of these clips, the very obviously fake ones, the audio doesn't even match up with the video, so I would say they're pretty easily dismissible whether you speak Korean or not. 
For the others, I have a cunning hack that I'm about to let you in on. It's genius. Ask someone who does speak Korean. Korean is really no different to English or French in the sense that there are regional dialects and accents. The length of time that North and South Korea have now been rigidly divided means that not only are the differences in pronunciation, but the actual vocabularies have started to diverge. Where South Koreans have borrowed terms from English and American English, North Koreans have tended to use loanwords from Russian due to their close ties with Russia and the Soviet Union up until the early 1990s. Meanwhile, North Korea's dialect has remained quite static over the last three decades due to how isolated and homogenous the country has become. Make no mistake, a North Korean and South Korean could still converse with very few confusions or misunderstandings, but equally, they could very easily identify someone as being from North or South Korea. In the 2010 video, none of this matters, because the original footage hasn't been doctored. It is a genuine broadcast by a North Korean newsreader talking in a North Korean dialect. It also has absolutely nothing to do with football, and the captions are completely made up. So, you can write that one off as nonsense. The 2014 video is slightly different, since the newsreader is talking about football, but it is very evidently a South Korean who has dubbed a North Korean news broadcast, and yes, that means that you can also disregard it as total rubbish. So, none of the videos claim to show North Korean state media declaring that North Korea had won the World Cup, or even top their group, are genuine. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the story is untrue. Sure, it wipes out a pretty key piece of evidence cited by much of the world's media, but I thought that I would go out in search of any outlets alleging that North Korea had been up to some cheeky tomfoolery that had evidence other than the dud news broadcasts. That is when I stumbled across this video from Soccer Stories Oh My Goal, who have almost 3 million subscribers on YouTube, which is entitled The Incredible Reason Why North Korea Thought Cristiano Ronaldo Won the World Cup. It's not quite North Korea winning the World Cup, but it features the World Cup and North Korea, and obviously, Cristiano Ronaldo hasn't won the World Cup, so that was enough to pique my interest. Despite only being 4 minutes, 24 seconds long, the video managed to pack in a whole raft of pretty sensational claims, so I'll do my best to address them with equal pointedness. The video contains the often repeated claim that North Korea chose to broadcast their game against Portugal live from the 2010 World Cup after a respectable 2-1 defeat and impressive performance against Brazil in the opening group game, but that the broadcast was cut off when Portugal went 4-0 up and that North Koreans never got to witness Portugal's last three goals as the Europeans ran out 7-0 winners in one of the biggest World Cup victories and, of course, defeats of all time. The video goes on to claim that North Korea didn't broadcast any other World Cup games from that point, and that they falsely told their citizens that Portugal went on to beat Argentina in the 2010 World Cup final, in an effort to save face and dampen the shame of that heavy group stage defeat by saying that Portugal was simply so much better than everyone else. Then there is the age-old claim that North Korea's entire World Cup squad and coaching staff were publicly shamed on stage and abused for six hours when they returned to Pyongyang, with their head coach, forced to become a builder before, and this is the same video here, later claiming that the head coach was forced to work down a mine for 12 to 14 hours a day. Which one is it, lads? You know, maybe it was both, a builder, then a miner, you know, like some kind of double punishment. And that is followed by a claim that I'm sure many of you will be familiar with, which is that North Korea's players were sent to labor camps and sentenced to an unspecified period of hard labor. The last claim made in the video, which I must admit was a new one to me, was that since the 2010 World Cup, North Korea's coaches no longer get to pick the national team's starting 11, and that the team is now picked by the supreme leader's son. I mean, wow, what a scoop. That is the first I've heard of that, and it is a pretty crazy revelation. Or at least, you know, it would be if it were true. To use an analogy here, if that video contained an entire beachfront of claims, might I suggest that there are roughly 15 grains of sand that contain even a modicum of truth. 
I'll start with the last point first because it is quite amusing. The Supreme Leader, Kim Jong-un, is widely believed to have three children, the youngest of whom could be as young as four and the oldest as old as 11. That video from Oh My Goal came out in 2019, so even if we are being charitable and assume that it is the oldest child picking the team, in 2019, he would have been nine years old. Kim Jong-un's children also have zero public profile at this age, and the international community knows virtually nothing about them. But apparently, lo and behold, he and his wife have conceived the little baby Jose Mourinho, a born tactical genius with a complex network of scouts assessing players from Chongjin to Heiju. Anyone who watched my only previous video exclusively about North Korea and the World Cup, which was about what happened to North Korea's 2010 World Cup squad over the following decade, will know that there is extremely, and I really do mean no evidence, that substantiates any of the claims with regards to public humiliation and punishments, let alone talk of labour camps and executions. Not only is there zero hard evidence, or any evidence that I've seen, to substantiate those claims though, some of it is actually demonstrably untrue and even the most cursory of fact-checking missions would show that to be the case. At one point during the four-minute nonsense fest, the Oh My Goal narrator states, and this is a direct quote, sadly, there's no way of confirming or denying this, before going merrily off on some other tangent and making yet another ludicrous claim. Fair enough, you could argue that North Korea brings some of this speculation upon itself by being the most secretive state on Earth and by telling plenty of genuinely mental lies to its people, but really, what kind of cop-out is that? There's no way of confirming or denying this. I cannot confirm nor deny that Luke Shaw's grandparents are lizards, or that Jamie Vardy skins goats whilst they're still alive in a caravan in Devon during the off-season, and that's why he chose to retire from international football so early. But on the balance of things, it doesn't seem very likely it would seem pretty disingenuous of me to make entire videos entitled The Incredible Reason Why Luke Shaw Is So Scaly, or The Blood-Curdling Reason Why Psychopath Vardy Hung Up His England Boots. And in actual fact, with very little effort, I could probably assess the validity of some of those claims. Luke Shaw's grandparents might still be alive, for example, and if they weren't lizards, that would provide a fairly compelling counter-narrative. I know it sounds like it, but this really isn't a dig at Oh My Goal. I know absolutely nothing about them, this is literally the first video of theirs that I've ever watched, and everything else that they do might be superlative. But it strikes me as being very lazy. But they are far from the only culprits, nor are they the most established. In the interest of clarity, I would like to point out those 15 grains of truthful sand. It is true, or certainly appears to be true, that the 2010 World Cup group stage game between North Korea and Portugal was the first, or at least the first in a number of decades, to be broadcast live in North Korea. Whether that is because of North Korea's very respectable 2-1 defeat to Brazil is less clear, and certainly I cannot find any reputable evidence to suggest that they cut the game off when North Korea went 4-0 down, or that they didn't show any more games from that World Cup. The idea that they somehow doctored footage to show that either North Korea or Portugal won is quite frankly one for the birds. The source that is cited by Oh My Goal is a Portuguese flight attendant named Alvaro Liete, who is cited in a similar context by a number of other outlets, including the Spanish magazine Marker. According to the article, Liete visited North Korea in April 2017 and spoke to a tour guide who told him about Portugal's exploits at the 2010 World Cup. Liete's full quote read, Throughout our visit to Pyongyang, we had the company of a guide who spoke English. He told us that Cristiano Ronaldo is a true idol for many people, and that football has a very high importance and popularity across the country. It was then that the idea formed in the country that Portugal had won, they were 4-0 up against North Korea when, due to embarrassment, the government regime cut the broadcast. It was after the 60th minute when Thiago scored, so no one in the country saw the other three goals of Portugal's 7-0 win. End quote. 
Now, far be it from me to go out and label Alvaro Liete the Portuguese flight attendant a liar. So, assuming that he isn't just telling porkies, presumably either his conversation with his tour guide, Liete, being a native Portuguese speaker, and the tour guide Korean, yet the two conversing in English, somehow got a little lost in translation, or he met a deeply confused Korean tour guide. Or, again, and I'm not alleging this, but equally, we cannot rule it out, he is just full of kimchi. We can be sure that it is nonsense, even though that didn't stop an awful lot of the world's media from being sucked in by it, because we know that World Cup games are frequently broadcast in North Korea, whether DPRK qualify and are involved or not. In fact, we even know that World Cup games have been broadcast on big screens in North Korea, which almost resemble the fan parks that we have during tournaments here in the UK, just with a little less beer getting thrown over people, which, if you ask me, is a big, albeit quite rare win for the DPRK against the UK. We have legitimate, undoctored footage of games being broadcast on big screens in North Korea, so there is really no need to speculate on that front. The broadcasts are believed to have been taken from South Korea with the company logo blurred out and replaced with the KCTV logo, North Korea's state-owned broadcaster. The commentary is also edited prior to the delayed screenings being shown hours or even days after the fact to audiences in the Hermit Kingdom, rather than being shown live. Football is hugely popular in North Korea, and North Korea are quite competitive within the Asian Confederation so there is little reason to believe that the Kim Dynasty would revise footballing reality. All of North Korea's games are broadcast in North Korea, along with a number of non-North Korea internationals and club games from other leagues, also typically with delays over several hours or days. The screening of football matches in North Korea is believed to be a consequence of the sport's popularity and widespread demand. Of course, North Korea is one of the least democratic countries in the world, but Cheap, easy, and cost-free PR wins are very rarely neglected. Plus, Kim Jong-un is believed to be a big football fan himself. It has been widely reported that he supports Manchester United, though that has now been contradicted by claims that he supports Inter Milan, but, you know, we'll deal with one myth at a time. Another common misconception when it comes to Korean football is the belief that North Koreans despise the South Korean national team and want to see them fail. There is no reason to believe that this is the case, and decent evidence to support the claim that the opposite is actually true. Certainly, it is true in the case of South Korea, where a 2011 poll revealed that an overwhelming majority of South Koreans also supported the North Korean national team whenever they weren't playing against South Korea. Over 70% of respondents said that they would support North Korea in a match between the DPRK and the USA with only 7% saying that they would support the United States. It's likely that this support is reciprocated north of the border, contrary to the prevailing Western narrative. The very real animosity that has been created by DPRK propaganda is almost all aimed at the South Korean government and its leaders, not at the South Korean public, who North Koreans still consider to be their kin and dream of reunification with. Another prevalent myth, or likely myth, is the idea that North Korea would be ashamed of not winning the World Cup or of suffering a big defeat, because Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-un, and the party machine are keen to project an image of sporting superiority over the West and over South Korea. Whilst it is not unthinkable that North Korea may have embellished their own sporting talents and achievements in the past, there is little reason to believe that they have done so to the extent that is often claimed, or even that they have done so to a much greater extent than most other countries. North Korea certainly views sporting success as a useful PR win, and the Workers' Party would undoubtedly seek to weaponize any success and appropriate it as having been their own, but not in a manner that makes North Korea particularly exceptional as they are in so many other areas. Almost all governments and politicians do this, whether it be in Russia, China, or indeed in the UK. North Korea does not claim sporting superiority over its perceived enemies, but ideological supremacy and purity. The claim made by North Korea and the Workers' Party's propaganda machine is that the United States and South Korea seek to undermine Juche, 
the national doctrine founded by Kim Il-sung, and that is why they must be opposed. Not that they are rubbish at sport, and that North Korea could crush them at football, basketball, and darts all at the same time. Just to be absolutely clear, because I can already feel this allegation coming my way, this is not North Korea apologia. It is just a video about misinformation, inspired by Ripple's Twitter request. There can be no doubt whatsoever that North Korea is a reprehensible and incredibly repressive authoritarian state, which is, by almost any measure, one of the poorest, least free, and cruelest societies anywhere in the world, where truly unspeakable crimes against humanity are committed on a daily basis. But it is precisely because of that fact that I find it so bizarre and pointless that anyone should make up pie-in-the-sky stories about North Korea. It is like all of the myths and made-up stories that you hear about Adolf Hitler. I mean, just why? There is already enough that we know about old Adolf for absolute certain, which tells us that he was a pretty bad dude. We don't need to make up stories about him fingering cats or not recycling to prove that point. The case is already closed. The truth is enough. Of course, the reason in the digital age why these stories get written is because sensational headlines and stories get clicks, and clicks generate cash. And also because, at this point, people would believe just about anything that was written about the DPRK. They've said all children have to be called Kim. Sounds about right. They've replaced the national curriculum with eight hours of synchronized swimming seven days a week. Yeah, that sounds like something they'd do. They have over 30 nuclear warheads and the fourth largest active military in the world. Yeah, yeah, all right, Th the last one's actually true. When I made that video detailing what some of North Korea's 2010 World Cup team were up to now and had done over the last decade, dispelling some of the myths surrounding them, I got loads of comments from people saying that they'd all been killed or sent to labor camps despite the video very clearly illustrating how we know for absolute fact that, in almost every case, none of that is true. And in the very few cases that we can't be absolutely sure about, there is still no evidence to believe that anything like that would have happened to a select few players, at least solely because of their footballing exploits. But it shows the power of misinformation, and how important the planting of that first seed is in people's minds. Give a man a reputation as an early riser, and he can sleep till noon, Mark Twain once said. And if you give North Korea a reputation of shooting their players or making them work down mines because they lost 7-0 to Portugal, it is really difficult for me to convince people that they didn't, even if the evidence is on my side. Admittedly, the Mark Twain quote is a bit snappier and easier to remember, but you get the idea. The Kim Dynasty and the Workers' Party tirelessly pump out propaganda telling North Koreans that everything is great in North Korea and that the West constantly spreads lies about them. We do no one any favours when we make the second point a legitimate criticism. I will end with a quick point about North Korean football, and it is a positive one. I said earlier that the DPRK is unlikely to feel the need to lie about football accomplishments since they broadcast all their games, have a football-mad population, and are competitive within the Asian Confederation. And I wasn't kidding. The last time North Korea played against South Korea, in 2019, the two teams drew one all. That is in spite of South Korea having a population twice the size of North Korea, far superior footballing infrastructure, and a number of players who play abroad, and one of the best players in the Premier League. Over the past decade, North Korea have beaten India, Indonesia, and Japan twice on the international stage, as well as drawing against Greece, South Africa, Sweden, Australia, and Venezuela. And that is just the men's team. The women are even stronger, ranking among the top 10 in the world, despite not having played a game in two and a half years due to fears over the COVID-19 pandemic. The same fears which, sadly, mean that the men's team also withdrew from 2022 World Cup qualification. All of that, along with the likes of Cho Song Hyok and Han Kwang Song having played in European top flights in recent years, shows that there is an incredible appetite for want of a better word, and some incredible talent when it comes to football in North Korea. And perhaps, with more modern infrastructure and better coaching, hopefully one day in a less repressive North Korea, the country and region could well become a real hotbed of talent. 
So that is it for today's video, inspired by Ripple's simple question. I hope I answered it, Ripple, and know that your username has made me want a chocolate bar. Other brands are available, of course. Thank you all very much as ever for watching. Hit the like button if for whatever reason you enjoyed today's video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on for HITC signs. You can also find me on social media on either Twitter or Instagram via the username at HITC7s on both, should you wish to do so.